All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is the one o'clock call for uh, Castro Fields. Um, again, same thing. If you have a question for Tariq, use the raise your hand function on Zoom and I'll ask you to unmute and then uh, we'll go through the questions. So uh, we'll start with Donnie Collins. Hey, Tariq. Hope you're doing well. How you doing? Hey, doing well. Um, how, how do you how do you kind of evaluate the, the job that the cornerbacks have done this season? Where do you need to improve? What do you think you've done really well? Yeah, um, I think, first of all, we've just been attacking practice um, hard. I've been trying to be um, on them young guys of just every little detail that I'm doing and just trying to make sure I'm fulfilling my responsibility as well of just working hard every day, um, coming with energy and juice because you don't get any days back. So first, just coming hard to practice. Second of all, um, I thought man coverage, you've been doing extremely well. Um, last week, we had a couple big plays that um, guys had that had happened to them. So um, we're just going to keep improving and just keep striving to be the best we can be. So. Parth? Hey, what's going on, Tyreek? Appreciate the time this afternoon. No doubt. What's it like from your perspective to, to go against Jahan Dotson in practice? Yeah, uh, Jahan, I mean, I keep telling people the catch he made against O-State, the one-hand one was like, I was surprised he did it, but it's so routine because his hands are just, that's what he does. He can make one-hand catches. He makes off-balance catches um, and provides a, a real good matchup. I mean, he's quick. Um, he's deceptive with his releases off the line. Um, his route running. I mean, he's a complete receiver, and I just, I just know he's going to take off this season and keep building on his performance last week for sure. Tobias Wilborn. Yeah. Um, for you, what's been the hardest part of the COVID protocols going through now, going into week three? You know, a lot of guys talk about not being able to see their parents and their family. What's it been like for you, being in the proverbial bubble and everything? Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say probably not seeing my mom and my grandma. Um, having, I got to see my mom last week just a, for a quick second. But other than that, I haven't been able to see them and talk to them and things like that. And just um, I think the hardest part is just realizing that times aren't normal. Like after games, we're just going home. Um, we're not seeing any outside people. Um, we're just seeing our teammates uh, all the time. So you just got to realize that to do what we want to do and – to be safe is just any times ain't normal. So um, I think it's harder for the young guys to kind of get, we're, we're trying to just stay on them and just tell them this is what we got to do. Audrey Snyder. Hey, Drake, thanks for your time. Um, no doubt. I wanted to ask you about another receiver, uh, Parker Washington. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys said that they felt since the time he got here, he was going to be pretty good. And we're starting to see that. Um, at what moment did Parker maybe impress you? Um, I would just say probably early in like August when we had camp then, um, that time he was making plays and he continues to make plays now. I mean, um, one-on-ones, he does a great job. I even get to guard him a little bit when I play the slot. So, um, I just try to help him as much as I, as I can being an older guy. And I've seen, um, so many guys play that slot, play the outside. So I know little tendencies and things like that, that a young guy would show. So I always try to after I guard him or whatever it may be, just try to break down. Don't do this. I already knew you was going to do this because you did that. So, um, yeah, he's came a long way, and he's, he has, I mean, the sky's the limit for him. I mean, he has he has all the tools needed to be successful. So, Joe Giuliano. Uh, hi, Tariq. Um, I'm just wondering, 0-2 uh, oh in, a, in a shortened season, uh, you guys uh, probably were playing for – big goals like a Big Ten championship and a, and a playoff berth. And I'm just wondering, what's the level of frustration for you that, uh, you know, you've gotten off to such a slow start as a team? And uh, how, how do you guys are, are trying to stay positive? Yeah, I mean, we're just trying to um, just trying to just just keep ahead. You know, what I mean, we got Maryland this week. It's a big game just because it's next. Um, and you can't can't harp on things because you can't change them now. I'm just trying to put in the best work week we can to be successful on Saturday. And I'm just trying to be the overall leader. Like, no matter what, my attention to detail has to be the same. My 
work ethic has to be the same. My preparation has to be the same because I got young guys that are watching me and, and how I act. So um, I'm just trying to be as consistent I, as I can be throughout any trial and tribulations, valley or whatever may whatever may come, just trying to be the same guy um, no matter what. So um, I think that's kind of the, the key. Mark Brennan. Tariq, uh, Coach Franklin and uh, P.J. Mustafer both told us about guys stepping up in the locker room after the game Saturday. Uh, who, who were some of the guys who spoke up and, and what was the message that the leaders were trying to get across to the team? Yeah, um, I mean, you got guys like Shaka, Mont, and um, Antonio, Antonio. Just the message is, like, we love each other no matter what, and no matter what, we're going to find a way. Like, that's as simple as I could put it. We're going to find a way, and – as long as we just keep preparing the same, um, focusing on little details and just keep pushing through. I mean, that's all you can do at this point. So um, I feel like the overall morale is, is high in the building. Um, we're still working to be one and know. Um, and I'm just excited for, for the rest of the journey because I know um, we got a lot of things ahead that we still can accomplish. So, Benjamin Free. Hey, Drake, thanks for doing this. Um, Maryland's coming in, obviously, with a hot quarterback in Tylea. Um, what's kind of jumped out on film from him for you? And what are you guys going to have to do in the secondary to make sure you uh, kind of contain him and shut him down? Yeah, um, I think he makes plays with his legs. and He does a good job of extending plays. Um, a good arm, can make throws and things like that. I think the main thing we got to do is just do our job. Like, don't try to be Superman. If whatever your role for that defense or for that call says for you to do, just do that, and then plays will come. Like, but with people kind of try to be Superman, that's not a recipe for anything that we want to see. So, just everyone do their job and just be um, respectful to everyone doing their job. Just knowing the guy next to you is going to do his job as well for you to make the play. So, just everyone doing their job, I would say, is the key. Tyler Donahue. Hi, Tariq. Uh, if I could throw another receiver. Um, your way for kind of a scouting report here. Keandre Lambert Smith stepped up to his starting role um, on the new depth chart. What did you see from him on the practice field to, to, to warrant that? And how rare is it to see two true freshmen, him and Parker, get to this point in their career this quickly? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, it's rare. I don't think any years I've been here, maybe KJ, but he was a redshirt freshman. Um, so that is extremely rare and they, they both, both of them guys deserve it. But uh, I think Keandre, he's just a competitor. Um, he competes out there no matter who's in front of him. Um, he plays the outside. So I get to go against him a bit more than I do Parker. So, um, I think he has good speed. Um, he's, he's coming to his own with his route running. Um, he's quick off the ball with his releases. Um, he just overall competes like he's a competitor no matter what. And, and when you have that, when you have that dog in you like that, I mean, anything can happen and you're going to make the play. So um, I think he competes at a, a very high level. Mark Wogenrich. I can't hear you. It looks like you're still muted for a sec. It shows you're not muted here. But here, Mark, I'll let you figure that out. I'll go to one more and come right back. We'll go to Donnie Collins again. Tariq, how, how are you a better player now than you were at the end of, of last season? And, and, and how, big a, how big a thing has health been for you? Yeah, I mean, staying healthy has been a, a big part of um, these – these few games, I mean, I've been playing a lot of snaps and things like that, which I, I love it. Um, I think I'm taking care of my body better this year. Um, just putting a lot of work in the training room, just trying to stay as fresh as possible. And I think overall, I think um, just my mindset of not wanting to lose a day of work has been has been blessing me so far. Like every day I come in, I'm trying to be the hardest worker. Um, just trying to always set the good example because I never know what young guy is watching me. So. I always just try to be that 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 older guy for them to look at off and on the field of how I act, my character, my actions and things like that. But I mean, I've been happy with um, my performance. I just know I got to work on some a few little a few little things, but uh, I guarantee I'm going to be working on those. We'll go back to Mark. 
Any better now? Good? Yeah, I can hear okay. you. Sorry, I apologize for that tweak. Anyway, you had mentioned earlier that you feel like the overall morale is high in the building. What have you seen or heard um, that lends you to see that? I mean, just people coming in, like we had off yesterday, but seeing a lot of guys in, still come and watch film, still go um, in the tubs, take care of their body, um, and still just, I mean, we want this, you know? It's still our season. Um, and we still got a lot to accomplish. So guys understand that and we're gonna put in the work, so. All right, we have time. We have four more hands raised. So we're gonna go to those questions to finish this out. Uh, we'll start with Nabai. Thanks Kevin and uh, thanks Tariq again. Um, Tariq, when you when you look at this Maryland team, you look at their their receivers, what challenges do they present when it comes to covering those guys? Yeah, uh, I think they got some some good guys over there. I mean, they make plays when when the ball is thrown to them. Um, I mean, seven and six are their are their go to guys, um, and five as well. So, I mean, they make plays when the ball is in their hands. Um, seven's like one of the bigger re receivers in the Big Ten. So, I mean, they both provide good little matchups um, for who who is ever out there. So, um, it's going to be a good matchup this week. Parth? Terry, you talked about, you know, the team still having a lot to play for. And I kind of want to refer back to, you know, Joe's question earlier. Um, now with, you know, starting 0-2, do you feel like the team has to recalibrate its goals, whether that be, um, you know, aiming for something different than a, than a Big Ten title or a college football playoff berth? I mean, I think that's what we talk about before the season, but y'all know how it is during the season. I mean, 1-0. It's just the goal we have this week, and that's kind of where my focus is. I'm not looking at bigger picture or whatever may happen at the end of the season, but as long as we take care of that kind of this week's business, I got practice today, take care of practice tomorrow, and then um, success will come on Saturday. So uh, that's kind of our viewpoint and how we stand on things. Uh, we'll actually do three more here. So we'll start with Nate Bow. Hey, how are you doing? How you doing? Good. Hey, I, I apologize. I got one more morale question for you. But, um, you know, for one reason or another, the the number of players that you have not had, right, from, from Micah to Noah, Journey, Cam Sullivan-Brown, uh, Keaton, like, does that does that play on you guys' psyche at all, Uh you know, to this point to have so many impact guys uh, not available to you? I mean, I don't think I really, that's really like crossed my mind a ton just because we're going to roll with the guys out there. And um, I trust any guy the coaches put out on the field, you know, um, they got recruited here for a reason. We're all meant to be here for a reason. So guys just, I mean, next man up. Um, a lot of guys have stepped up and continue and have to continue to step up. So, I miss the next man up mentality here. So that's how I kind of view it. Mark Brennan. Tariq, what can you tell us about uh, Take One Roberson and Micah Bowens and, and maybe the looks that they're able to give you on the scout team as you're going through a stretch of pretty good quarterbacks that you're facing here? Mm -hmm. um, I think that Micah does a great job of just using his legs. Like, I didn't know he was that fast. Like, he's, pretty, he's a pretty fast quarterback. Um, and he lets the thing go. Um, just gives his, his receiver chances to make plays. And it helps us in the long run um, with deep passes, with scramble drill um, and things like that. So they, they've both been doing a great job with just being um, the scout quarterback or whatever it may be, whatever the coaches asked uh, of them, they've been doing a great job. So. And last question, Tyler Donahue. What, uh, what are, do you consider to be the biggest challenges about trying to master that star position in the Penn State defense? And what does Lamont Wade do to put himself in, in, in to be the number one guy there? And, and another name, Daquan Hardy, it was mm -hmm. mentioned by James Franklin as someone who's coming along in that role. Mm -hmm. What do you see from Daquan? We still don't know much about him in game action. Yeah. I mean, that star role, you're doing – you're asked to do a whole lot from zone coverages to guarding the slot. Um, I mean, as y'all know – that slot world is different just because 
the guy has two ways. And if you're not using the proper leverage that the defense asks for, then it kind of leaves you out no men's land and you got to truly guard them. Um, so that slot, I mean, you blitz, you got run fits um, and things like that. So you got to know what everyone's doing when you're in, in that slot world. I mean, Lamont, he's been playing it for so long that he just has a lot of experience in it and he knows what to do. Um, there's no hesitation. He could kind of do something else, but still get to his job. So, um, yeah, he's a, a real smart guy. And same as Dede. I mean, Dede is one of the smartest corners in the room, just knowing what to do, knowing route concepts and things like that. And he's a he's a dog as well. Like, he competes every day, um, comes in with a great attitude, ready to learn, um, listens to what I have to say, what Coach V has to say, what Coach T has to say. And that's all you can ask for as a young guy, just to, for him to soak up all the knowledge that he can. And he's been using it and, and making plays. So, I'm excited for his future as well. And, and now, of course. All right, that concludes this session. Take uh, Tariq, thank you very much for your time. And thank you. Media for Enjoy your day.